Okay, before I get into the theory, I want to say thank you all for 100 subs. My COD Zombies video is doing really well. My sub count was going up as I wrote the script for this video. But again, I want to thank you all for subscribing. I will do a video on BO1 Zombies as a sequel to the World at War Zombies as that type of zombies was terrifying too. But I'm going to get my other videos done first, so you're going to have to wait for that video. But if you like my style of content, you're going to enjoy my other videos and future ones. But that's enough for that small announcement, let's get into the theory. So in Lethal Company, in one of the logs, in the real job entry, Jess mentions that there was going to be a war on Titan, as Sigurd's father was living there. And Sigurd was worried about his father's life, and hoped that his father wasn't staying on Titan, as everyone was anticipating for this war to happen. And that war possibly happened, as these logs are old, as these logs take place in 1968, and in-game right now we are in the future. And we can visit Titan, but it is abandoned, there is no human life, just the monsters that roam around it, and just one singular building that we can visit. And we can speculate that this war happened, but what caused it to be so much intense? As this once livable planet became so barren as the winter hellstorm encompasses the whole area. In game and lore, we have no clue of how intense this war was, we are only seeing the after effects. So for today's video, I'm going to theorize on what weapons were used in this war and what were they targeting. Oh, and remember, this is all speculation, so my theories might end up being disproven. As later, I think there might be an update coming out soon as I think the creator updates around the, towards the end of the month or the beginning of the month. And this next update is probably going to be a big one. So there's going to be more lore, more items and practically more monsters. So again, my theory might get disproven. So for my first piece of evidence of what type of weapon they used during the war, we're going to have to look at the apparatus, as the apparatus has a weird liquid in it. And this weird liquid seems to be powering everything, as when you take it off the wall, it causes everything to black out. And when you take it off, you get a micro dosage of radiation. So this weird liquid has something related to nuclear energy, but we don't know what type of process that makes this weird liquid, as this weird liquid it has a lot of power to it, and it can even power an entire building and it seems to be the whole technology behind in this game. But this weird liquid reminds me of the emotion from Gears of War 1, because in that game's universe a lot of weapons use emotion as a fuel source to power them. Like in the ending of Gears of War 1 when they used the light mass bomb against the locust. Light mass bomb was very powerful as it caused a lot of cave-ins, it's almost similar to a nuke. So back to the apparatus, as I think the weird liquid was used for a bomb, and it was probably more powerful than a thermonuclear bomb, or something else entirely. Probably something worse than a nuclear bomb. And this new form of bomb was used on Titan. As I think one of the reasons on why the planet is so barren or a tomb world is that this bomb was probably set off and caused a winter storm on Titan. As the winter storm is probably a nuclear winter and this bomb is causing the effects of it even though it was probably detonated a long time ago. Massive amounts of radiation from the bomb caused a massive fallout and is what's causing this nuclear winter to still persist. Or maybe it's not even snow at all and we're just walking over ash. The storm we are experiencing in the game is probably an ash storm. But again, we still have no clue what it is or what caused this storm to happen. As for the type of war what it was, we have no clue what it is. But in my headcanon theory I came up with in my other video, I think the Cold War is still going on. I think Titan was used as a proxy war, as the two superpowers, or I guess in this case they could be seen as space superpowers, but they used a proxy war to test their weapons, and one of those weapons was probably this bomb or something else entirely that caused this planet to be like this. As for my Cold War theory, we still haven't gotten confirmation of what type of planet Titan was. Is it Saturn's moon or is it a different moon entirely? As I think during the Cold War, I think that our solar system is totally off limits for any types of war. Anything outside of our solar system is free game. But those are my thoughts. What type of war it can be, it could be a planetary war, a civil war, or a rebellion. We have no clue on what it is, but it had been an important war. Titan was probably a lively planet and had a lot of human population, but now it's barren and desolate, thanks to the war. For my second piece of evidence, it has to do with the building, as during the war it was probably an important target. It can be three things, it could be a military outpost, ammo depot, or war factory. And probably during the later stages of the war it was left behind. And that's another reason why this one's a high value planet because it has so much scrap inside. This was probably all the leftover stuff during the war. But again, for the possibilities for this type of building it can be, it can be so much because it can be either a civilian target or a military target. Or a research lab too. There's just so much possibilities again. 
but also too it has a chance to be a mansion you can see the mansion is probably a residential house for a governor or an important leader either this place was a high value target with so much scrap inside of it but it probably didn't get touched by the war because it probably ended too quickly or they kept this place hidden due to that this place is still standing and that's why the probably the company is so interested in this facility as it it's so much treasure inside of it and it could possibly feed the creature behind the wall with so much abundance of scrap all of this scrap keeps the monster behind the wall tamed and so it would not break outside of its wall for my third piece of evidence which is going to be the main thing for this whole speculation they use genetically engineered creatures for this war and I think these five creatures had a certain significance in this war, as they're the most unnatural ones throughout the whole game. And I'm talking about the Bracken, the Nutcracker, the Ghost Girl, and the Jester, and the Coil Head. I know the Ghost Girl is supernatural, but I think she plays a significant role. She's not a genetically engineered creature, she's a supernatural being, but I think she was part of the war. But I'll get into that later on. So, all these creatures I mentioned are unconfirmed to be part of the Titan War. The only one that's confirmed or speculated to be in in-game lore is the coil head, as it appears to be a part of somewhat war, due to the high radioactive properties it has. So we're going to be talking about the coil head for a little bit, and speculating on what type of role it had during the war, or even if it was involved in the war. He's in the game, it is said that they were recently discovered, and they're highly unpredictable. They haven't been fully studied yet, and if they were, they'll suddenly converse into flames, either when they're being dissected or deactivated. So probably this was meant to be intentional, because if they were to be captured by the enemy, they wouldn't want them to be reverse engineered or find out their weaknesses. So they probably engineered them to spontaneously combust if they were captured by someone foreign. This is one possibility. The other possibility is these were failed creatures, they are failed experiments. Why would a military carry something so highly radioactive? They would just damage their own troops or damage the area they are being stored in, as the radiation can poison the area. And if they did intend to use this creature, they will need to transport it. The way how they probably transport it by vehicles is to have it encased around lead shielding. Or have it in the capsule and have it shot it inside a defended area. And have the coil head cause chaos. As it only moves when no one's looking at it. So it could probably have been used in night operations as it tried to kill many troops. So it can make the defended area easy to capture. It's possibly what might be the intended role for this creature. But it became a failed project and it was too dangerous. Or probably it was still in the effects of a prototype phase, but by the time the war ended, they stopped working on these guys. So they didn't know how to dispose of them, so they just locked them up in a nuclear waste disposal area, waiting for them to rot away. But somebody unlocked that area and set these guys free, now they're wandering these desolate moons. More possibility, I think these guys are failed creations, as the way how they look, almost seems like they're not even fully completed. Probably the way how we see the color right now, it's probably half of its full power. We haven't seen its full power yet as these guys are still in their design phase. But the possibility of this war ending didn't lead to their full product, so they were meant to be locked up and just rot away. I think that's all I can come up with with the coil head. Now I'm going to be talking about the nutcrackers. The nutcrackers in the lore, it says that they are the defenders of the house, but it doesn't mention that they were part of the war. I think they were, as these guys were probably engineered to be sentries, as when you see them patrolling around, they stop and scan the area. And when you can see them patrol, you see an eyeball pokes out out of their head. This eyeball is controlling nutcrackers, as I think the eyeballs are biologically engineered using nutcrackers, almost like a mech suit. They are meant to guard high valued areas, so they would just fill up the lines of defense and they could have more troops on that front lines. And also, you can see a certain way of how they are engineered not to shoot certain people, who are probably wearing special uniforms or colors. And when they see you, they shoot you on sight, as they see you as an enemy. I think the eyeballs have a special vision, because I think the way how they're engineered is that they can see certain people who have certain colors that flare to them and they can be seen as friendly. But due to us wearing the company suits, it's very foreign to them and they probably see us as an, an intruder. I think these guys were mass produced. But by the end of the war, they were forgotten and left behind. They thought they would just rot away and die on their own, but still, to this day, they roam the areas they need to defend. But I think that's all I have to talk about for the Nutcracker. Now I'm going to be going on for the next creature, the Jester. Now for the Jester, there is nothing of the lore about it as Sigurd was too afraid to document on this creature. But I thought of a terrifying role for this creature that could be used in the war. I can imagine it being dropped off by a dropship, being deployed behind enemy lines and causing chaos. Because I can just imagine it winding up and then going crazy on those soldiers. It basically eats the whole trench line. I don't know, I think that's just an intended role from off the top of my head because that sounds really scary and more for like psychological warfare. And it probably even takes up the whole defense line. 
but I think these guys were heavily genetically engineered. When the box opens, they have a human skull. And also to how fast they catch you up. I know this is probably through game design that they're meant to be like an, an impossible creature to kill. But I would like to think that they engineered this to catch up to any target it wants to eat. Of all the whole creatures with the Jester, the Coilhead, and the Nutcrackers, these three are the most unnatural ones. It almost seemed like they were man-made instead of being made out of nature. In my head, I would like to put these guys in the category of man-made creatures. With these two other ones like with the Bracken and Ghost Girl, the Bracken almost seems like a mixture of nature and genetically engineered. I will get to that theory part on the next one because I'm going to be talking about the Bracken. But for the Ghost Girl, I think it's a supernatural being. So with that bad segue, we're going to be talking about the Bracken. Now for the Ghost Girl. The Ghost Girl is the most supernatural creature out of all in Lethal Company. And I think it's the only one too. There is no journal entry on this. You have to figure it out on your own. Well not figure it out on your own. It just stalks you in one of the levels. For my theory, I think the Ghost Girl is a victim of the war. So too, it could be representing of all the people that died during the war. As probably the planet becoming barren, so much death happened that it created like a supernatural energy that this ghost is like forever a vengeful spirit. I think that's why it kills us. That's excluding the sanity mechanic in the game. But for this one, this is pure speculation. I think that's all I have to talk about the ghost girl. I think that's all the evidence I could come up with. I guess one side tangent is that the about the manticores. Because they carry two diseases that seem unique. Talking about the pit virus they carry and, and the Reuben cholera. So I think these are genetically engineered diseases. But of course, there's nothing that backs it up. But I think that's all I have for today. I wanted this to be a short video because I think the new update is about to come out soon. Also too, I kind of want to share out this stupid theory. The thing is, I'm going to be super excited about the new update. Because it's about the new monsters and new lore that's going to come out with it. As the creator says, it's going to be a big update drop. But that means new lore and a lot of disproven theories too. I think I'll come up with more theories, but I'm not really not sure. I guess I could make a video on the Bracken or do a short on it because I think the Bracken is more of an alien species than actually being something else. For the Bracken, it's too mysterious. They're eerily humanoid and they're very smart, so it seems like they have their own intelligence. But that's for another video. I think that's all I have to talk for today. Oh, I hope you guys have a nice day. This is Mazer Argo signing out.